whenever you get let go, and now that I run a company yeah. and I love the people at Sumo Group, letting someone go is a very challenging thing. And that's something they never forget for the rest of their life. Um, and yeah, I, it burns it burns into your psyche. Like I was, I was only fired once in my life, but it really does it does fuck with you. It like totally it, with you, man. Yeah. Uh, so a few different things. So number one, I actually after I got let go, they make you try to sign something like saying you're not going to sue the company. Right. And so I was like, I'd prefer not to sign that. I like my equity because I've you know in the one year that I have worked almost, I've put in like I don't know four years of life. I think internet life is like dog years. Yeah. For every year of internet work, it's like five to 10 years of like normal right. human life because you're fucking working a lot. Right. Um, and so I fought for it and I asked for it and they're like, no. And I kind of think I, part of me also felt like, well, I didn't really earn it if I wasn't there for a year. Right. So I kind of accepted it after I asked for it. I kept, was like, hey, give me some. And Owen Venata, uh, yeah. who went on to run Amazon and other things, uh, they said no. And I was like, or Zynga he did. And uh, I was like, okay. And then so I was in a depressed state for, I don't know, nine to 12 months. So in terms of things I think I could have done incorrect, things I would work on or improve if I had to go back and tell myself advice. Um, number one, I actually got a raise there and promoted. Not, mm -hmm. not like a title promotion, but they're like, you're doing a good job. Here's more money. Right. You're actually doing very so well. So you were doing something right there. I was doing something right. I think the things that, in, re in retrospect, our minds rationalize and protect ourselves to mm -hmm. create a story that makes it sound like, oh, this is why it happened. Or this right, is right, right. Or, this is my story that I repeat. So one of the reasons I got fired is Coachella. So the famous that, Coachella story. The Coachella story where I told Mike Arrington, like, hey, we're coming out with some feature. I think you should write about it because we're not promoting ourselves at all. Mike wrote about it early. They didn't like that I wrote that, that I told about it. What was the feature? I don't even remember at this point. It was I think, like, wasn't I think, it that you guys were going to be not an EDU service? Yeah, open I think up? it was like we're opening up for professionals, for the work domains. Which was a pretty big deal. It was a big deal, and we didn't do any press so around it. So you're at Coachella with Mike Arrington. No, no, I called him on the phone or I was texting him. Oh, you him. called him. I was yeah. going to say Mike Arrington's not going to. No, no, no. So anyways, so th that's not, the point of the story was that like, as you get, so I, for me, at a 30% And company, you weren't the PR person. You weren't, no. the, you weren't responsible for that. No, I was not. But for some crazy reason, well, you thought you would I don't know. Mike. It wasn't crazy at all. I was the product manager that helped make that happen. Ah. And I want to make sure that it gets recognition and people use it. And Got so it. if you want work domains to use it, you have to tell people who have attention of workers. Got it. I see. And so, so I So you wanted, felt like you were doing the right thing. I felt like it's launching in the morning. Did they he ever might... tell you not to? No. 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 So they never I, told you like, and I told, PR I, is controlled by this person. Don't ever talk to Arrington no, or any I, PR people. And I told them straight up once I did it, I was like, hey, guys, heads up. Like, this is something I did. Uh, it's not something I'm hiding. The second thing was, though, in retrospect and now noticing my patterns and things I do over time, um, my strength is in, like, chaos. My strength is when things aren't answered and uncertain and they need to be, like, figured out. The mm -hmm. zero to one. Like, I love zero to one. One to two, I have to bring hire people and to help And by zero me. to one, you mean? Like, from nothing is existing to creation. Love it. That's, that's what I love, and that's what I'm yeah. really good at. And so I, I hire people and find people that, that compliment me around that. And so with Facebook, at 30 people, it was like literally my first day, they're like, Noah, here's a laptop. Find a fucking desk. Get to work on stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Finally, my tribe. This is my thing. Then at, you know, nine months later, there's 150 people in a company. We 5 x in, in under a year. And to have a meeting about some bullshit thing, yeah. it was like some stupid old woman was like, oh, well, let's have a 30-person meeting. And we had like talk for an hour about some bullshit stuff that I'm like, I don't give a fuck about. Let's go yeah. back to work. Yeah. And so in retrospect, I was actually starting to get bored, which sounds crazy, right? Yeah. Now Facebook's 10,000 people. Uh, but I was bored and I was like, can we just make things happen and, and move Zuckerberg it quicker? Zuckerberg famously took you aside and said, hey, Noah. How do you know all this stuff? Get you your- talk to? Do you talk get to Zuck? To, yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> Well, you know, Zuck's a big fan of the show. Yeah. And, you know, I told him you're coming on and he gave me a couple of stories. But he pulled you aside and he tried to say, hey, kid, you're smart. And he wasn't that, was he older than you? No, about same, same age. age. Same age. So he had same age. And Jewish. What Jewish? Come and on. so he says, hey, we're both members of the same tribe here. <laughs> tribe let, <laughs> let me give you some advice. Oh, well, Noah. Noah. <laughs> Shlomo. <laughs> Shlomo Rabinowitz. <laughs> have to get it together. <laughs> What is your mom going to say? The bagels? The if I fire nuts. you, your mom, uh, well, she's going to be beside herself speaking uh, to your mother. Actually, Mark's mom was kind of rude, by the way. She, and it, Mark's mother was rude? She walked in. So my mom comes to the office, and she's nice to everyone. She asks how everyone's doing. She's really sweet. How are you doing? She's like, what oh, doing? Eamon. How's my little Eamon doing? I miss him. <laughs> Mark, Mark's, I remember this, because she walks in the office one day, and I'm like, hi, Mrs. Zuckerberg. It's good to see you. I'm really excited. Nice to meet you. And she's like, just walks right by, goes to Mark. And I was like, that was rude. Wow. That was, yeah, I was like, that's rude. Huh. Um, but Mark pulled me aside and what he said in that story, and it's actually funny, I've, I had to let someone go six months ago, which was that exact story. Wow. Which was kind of like a Lion King Take moment. that moment. What it was like, oh, Zimba. So he comes uh, over Zimba. and he says, hey, so can he, I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, and it wasn't about the Coachella thing. This was probably three months before that. And what he specifically said is that like, there is Facebook 
And your job, and if you want to be successful here, is to make Facebook successful. Not Noah. Because at that time also, I think one of the reasons, in terms of reasons I got fired, one, I did well when it wasn't organized and like things just needed to be happening. I think it's like, hey, we need Excel sheets and we need all these meetings and all this kind of stuff. I just wasn't prepared mentally to be doing that. I wasn't really interested in doing that. The other thing that was personally, and I think this is a thing with businesses and why we actually let someone go recently, is that when you're creating a company, the best way to get successful, the best way to get known, the best way to get attention is make the company successful, Mm -hmm. not yourself. Right. So at that time, I was like going to conferences and I was blogging about Facebook and Part of it was I wanted the attention and the ego of it. Right. And part of it, I was like, yo, people should know about Facebook. This thing is going to be amazing. This is a right. great thing. This, and honestly, in terms of priorities of my life, Facebook was number one. It was like Facebook, maybe food and health, then my old girlfriend, and then my family. So and, he told you what? He said specifically, he's like, look, you can choose. You're going to either do the Noah show or the Facebook show. And, ah, this, and that's what he said. said it that way, yeah. That's a, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah. I don't have it recorded. Right. right. Uh, and he's like, which one do you want? And, you know, you can go either way. And that's just for you to choose. And, and at that time, and it, it's kind of what this guy we let go recently uh, in our company six months ago. He's very talented. He was very good. He's young. You know, at the same age, he's 24, I think. I might be 23. But he's a maverick. He didn't want to be a team player. And to grow a company, you can't do it alone. So you need a team. And you have to have team players. You right. have to have band members in a right. band. Yeah, you got to be on time. And so... You got to show up for rehearsal on time. You got to be on time in the song. Exactly. And everyone's got to play their part really well for the yeah. whole music to and sound great. And here you are. Noah's like, oh, I'm going to go play a solo. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, Zuck's like, hey, solo... Is Zuck's show. Yeah, it's the Zuck show. If we're going to do a solo, maybe I'm going to do the solo and, you know, you can just step back a little bit here. And, and that's all what right. it was. I mean, I, I think if I had to do it all over again, the same thing would probably happen. Hey, everybody, let me tell you a little bit about Braintree. It's a full-stack payment solution for all your payment types for your customers. Yes, you can do mobile payments fast, easy, seamless, and secure. And you can add it to your apps with just a few lines of code, and then you'll be able to accept Apple Pay, Android Pay, PayPal, Venmo, credit cards, and, of course, Bitcoin, everything. And if some other new way to pay people comes along, you know the Braintree team will support that to developers love it, founders love it, because it's got superior fraud protection, fast payouts, and continuous world-class support. You'll have fewer abandoned carts, more sales with Braintree's best-in-class mobile checkout, and their customers include, are you ready for this, Uber, Thumbtack, Hotel Tonight, Airbnb, GitHub, and StubHub. And I'm an investor in two of those six companies, and you'd be in good company to be in that class of companies. Well, here's a call to action, everybody. They're going to give you $50,000 in transactions fee-free. Yes, that's for the people who are on the This Week in Startups audience. If they go to braintreepayments.com slash twist, braintreepayments.com slash twist, and you'll get $50,000 fee-free. You can't go wrong with that. Developers love it. It's easy to use. What more do you need to know? Thank you to my friends at Braintree for sponsoring independent media like This Week in Startups. Okay, let's get back to the program. 